part of our masculinity where <laughs> sorry about that didn't have my video on some of us men can feel like we've lost a part of our masculinity you know we lost a, a, a limb a, an arm or leg and how are we going to provide for you know our families we're, we're kind of less than whole and some of the ladies you know you can sometimes feel as though you've lost a part of your femininity you know is my husband going to feel attracted to me now that I'm an amputee am I still sexy um, or my significant other you know do they want to be with me I'm 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 disabled and uh, these are all valid concerns um, adapting to and accepting your new normal will take some time but you will get used to it you know we human beings are constantly changing and constantly adapting to change you know whether it's a new school or a new job or a new relationship we tend to to go with the flow and and find the beauty in a new situation so i'm going to share some tips with you of some of the things that have worked with me the last 43 years of this journey that i've been on and i've experienced so many different situations and emotions and in all honesty, in the beginning, I had nobody to help guide me through this journey because back when I first became an amputee, the support systems were not in place as you know, the resources were not as readily available as they are today. And, um, you know, we, 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 I had a great support system with my family, but they didn't know anything about being an amputee and I didn't know anything about being an amputee. So they gave me the best that they had. They had. Um, now, you know, there's the amputee, the amputee coalition, uh, there's online support, um, there's, you know, social media, friends, family, all that kind of stuff. And we all know the importance of, of um, helping each other. And um, so I hope that none of you have to ever go through some of the pain, uh, some of the frustration, some of the anger, some of the emotional trauma that I had to go through when I first uh, lost my limb. Um, so, and that's why I'm here as an advocate or uh, the amputee community as a whole. So um, I wanna just tell you about some things that helped me and um, let's get started. How come my screen is not moving? Here we go. So in West Philadelphia, born and raised, and you know the rest of the song, that's where you go. So I was just, uh, how I became an amputee, you know, it's back in 1978. This is actually, I think, a picture from 1972. I was a little chubby kid, a um, little fat kid. Uh, I was very, very adventurous. Grew up in the inner, inner city of Philadelphia. Um, Will Smith actually grew up two doors from me. That's a, that's a fact. His mother uh, babysat me and my mother babysat him. They're best friends to this day. And interesting fact, uh, Miss Carolyn, she is a member of our community. She is an amputee. She's a below knee amputee. And um, yeah, uh, one particular day I decided to go out on an adventure and went out onto some train tracks where we always played because we didn't have Xbox or the internet. And I climbed on top of a, a train box car and I got too close to an electrical power wire and I got electrocuted with 13,000 volts of electricity. So I got burns over 30% of my body, third degree burns. And then the most significant uh, injury was to both of my legs. I had to have both of my legs amputated below the knees. And uh, so I spent a month in a burn center, went to rehab, spent about a month in rehab. You know, I was a 14 year old kid. So I was very, very uh, resilient as kids can be. And then I had the rest of the summer to practice um, walking in prosthetic legs. Prosthetic leg technology was archaic back in those days. I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> they, were not, they were not the greatest of legs to try to walk in. So I tell people now that the struggle was real back in the day. Um, There's a photo of me and one of my nurses in the rehab center. And, and I got plenty of good use out of that wheelchair there. Um, but the legs were, um, were very clunky. They were heavy. They didn't stay on very well. But it was the best that we had, and we made the best out of uh, the situation, you know, at hand. But um, I had my support system, my family, who instilled in me a never-say-die attitude, and they told me that I could do anything that I wanted to do, that I could be anything that I wanted to be, despite the fact that I was an amputee. And I believed them, whether they believed that or not. I mean, they believed it, but they didn't know how 
I was going to manage uh, and, and grow and, and, and mature you know, as an amputee in, in the community. But they knew their son and they knew their son was resilient. So uh, I graduated high school, went to college. And when I went to college, I discovered a love of motorcycles. And I decided that I wanted to become a professional motorcycle drag racer. And that's what I did. I became a professional motorcycle drag racer and actually ended up being a two-time world champion drag racer as an amputee, believe it or not. All of my competitors were able-bodied. I was the only disabled person on a tour. And back in those days, you know, everybody wasn't as woke as, um, as we are nowadays. You know, there was a very little inclusivity um, when it came to people with disabilities participating in sports, in extreme sports, or being a pilot. I got my pilot's license. Um, you know, I raced these motorcycles, but I didn't tell the governing bodies about my disability back then because I was scared that they would not let me participate because they, in their minds, you know, people with disabilities back then were more of a liability than an asset. So I had to go out and prove myself first that I was able to do these things and do them well. And in all honesty, the fact that I was an amputee and doing these extreme sports, I had to work harder than my competitors in order to, uh, to ride or to race. And then I had to work even harder if I wanted to beat them because they had a physical uh, advantage over me but that extra hard work turned into skill. Um, and I used that skill to, uh, to win championships. So um, yeah, never underestimate the power of the disabled. <laughs> and uh, we are powerful. And that's the message that I like to share now. That's the message that a lot of us uh, amputees, my brothers and sisters, we like to share because we're changing, we're slowly changing the perception of a d the disabled when it comes to you know, living and pursuing our dreams and setting high goals and standards for ourselves. People no longer look at us as uh, liabilities, like I said. They look at us as assets, as champions. But um, yeah, so that's my background. Uh, won some races, got on the map. Good Lord wanted me to use my racing and my, uh, my, 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 my championships as a vehicle to open doors, to get the attention of the public about the power of the disabled. So adapting to limb loss, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, three of the tips that helped me adapt to my limb loss, and it's, it took me a long time, I'm talking years, probably decades for me to actually fully accept who I was or who I am. Uh, three tips that helped me was one, acknowledging my feelings. Two, was finding your purpose in life. And set, three, setting attainable goals. And, you know, acknowledging your feelings. You know, if you're feeling lost and depressed, angry, confused, hopeless, you have every right to feel that way. Initially, when I was going through, you know, some of the the, the rehabilitation, I think a lot of times we focus on the physical rehabilitation when you lose a limb and we don't focus on the mental rehabilitation, the psychological, you know, the emotional rehabilitation. And uh, that's just as important as the physical rehabilitation, learning to walk again or learning to, to use a, a, an upper limb prosthesis if that's your, your situation. Um, you have to acknowledge those feelings. You have to go through the feelings of depression and the feelings of anger and confusion and hopelessness. And key word being through, going through them. You, you're not gonna stay in that place, but you have to go through them so you can experience those, these, those emotions in your brain. Chemicals start to spin. It allows you to start to uh, lay the groundwork to rebuild, okay, to rebuild, to come back stronger. Sometimes when you don't acknowledge your feelings, when you don't acknowledge that trauma, then you may rehabilitate physically, you may rehabilitate 
uh, emotionally, but you don't truly heal. So you're building, you're rebuilding on shaky ground. Sometimes you need to just cry. You need to get that cry out. And it's okay. I'm here to tell you it's okay. You know, your amputee brothers and sisters are here to tell you that it's okay to acknowledge those feelings. You have every right. And actually, it's a part of the healing process. So let it out. Cry, scream, hit a punching bag, do whatever you got to do to, um, you know, to, to vent to, and talk to somebody. Um, there's great resources here at the Amputee Coalition. There's lots of resources for you uh, that'll help you in your, your new journey. And there's lots of resources for your family, for the people who your, your loved ones that will help you through that journey as well. So two, find your purpose in life. Use your situation to help others. Now, this is where I found the, the greatest sense of happiness for me was to use my amputation in such a way in my life and my life experiences in such a way to help other people with their journey. This took a while for me to do this because I was going through a, a period of time where, you know, I, just like everybody else after this happened, I was asking, you know, why Lord me? Why? Why did this happen to me? I'm a very spiritual person. So I was like, why me? Well, why not me? You know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm the best candidate. So the good Lord thought, it's like, hey, Reggie, I got a job for you. I'm going to knock you down. And then I'm going to reach down and pick you back up. And I want you to use your life to help other people be inspired, be encouraged um, to live their lives, to pursue their goals, to pursue their dreams, and to go out and be uh, a shining light in a dark place. So use your, your situation, use your amputation to help other people. That's the greatest way to find true joy in life. When you can make a difference, a positive difference in somebody else's life uh, through, you know, a trauma that you've experienced, it brings it all into, into light. It makes it all worthwhile. It makes sense out of the situation uh, about what happened to you. So find your purpose in life is a second, my second tip. And three, set attainable goals. I think this applies to just ev to everybody. You have to set goals for yourself. Now, those goals don't have to be, you know, huge goals like the, uh, the caption says here, like climbing a, a mountain. You know, you, you set daily attainable goals so you can see progress. Uh, that goal, the first goal for me was just learning how to walk in parallel bars. Then after I built up some strength, I set a goal for myself to walk with, um, with crutches. After I built up more strength of walking with crutches, my next goal was to walk with a cane. And so there was slow progress, but it was steady progress. And I could see the progress, which motivated me to continue to, to improve and to give more and to set more goals. Um, your smallest attainable goals, like I said, should be things that you could accomplish daily. And then set some goals that you can accomplish that'll take you like a week or a month and definitely set some long-term goals for yourself. Stuff that's gonna take you maybe a year uh, to, to accomplish. And these things will help you to, uh, to, to gain structure you know, in your life. And these were very, very therapeutic. These were these, these three uh, tips that I'm offering you here. Um, they worked for me. I've talked with other amputees and they've done similar, similar things in their real rehabilitation process. And uh, it's actually worked for them. So it was very, very valuable uh, to do that as well. So Dealing with insecurities. I want to talk to you just briefly about insecurities. Um, first of all, I think all of us, when we go through an amputation, we're, there's going to be some feelings of insecurity. I know definitely it took me years to get over. I still have some insecurities. Uh, I'm a grown man and I'm confident in myself and my abilities, but I'm confident enough to tell you that I am insecure in certain areas and I'm getting over that. It's taken a while. The more I work on it, the better I get. So I think all of us do have some insecurities, whether we want to acknowledge them or not, but what's helped me to deal with my insecurities and talking with some of my other amputee friends, brothers and sisters is to number one, know your worth. 
you got to know your value. Number two, surround yourself with positive people, people who are motivating, people who can uplift you, people who can help guide you. Number three, learn a new skill or a hobby. These things work for me. Um, as far as knowing your worth, each of us is born with a specific gift or a talent that makes us unique, that makes us special. And I mean, all of us, each and every one of us. And when you find out what that gift is, it's up to you to manifest that gift and then give it back to the universe. So when you do that, the universe is complete. If you don't manifest your gift, then the universe is incomplete. There's so many people who, who die, unfortunately, having not given back their talents. There's so many books that will never be written. There's so many songs that will never be written and sung because people did not know their worth and they took their gifts to the grave. And that's something that we don't want. We want to, to realize who we are. We want to realize our value, realize our gifts, and then give those gifts back to the universe so the universe can be complete. I need your gifts. You need my gifts. This is how it all works. We need each other. And surround yourself with positive people. People who can uplift you. Now, a lot of people, they come to me and they talk and they say, hey, you know, Reggie, you're such an inspirational person. You know, your, your story is so amazing. And I, and I love to hear you tell your story, this, that, and the other. And I say, they say, how do you stay so motivated and so positive? I said, well, you know, sometimes there's cloudy days in my life, believe it or not. I don't always stay 100%. Uh, I need to be around other motivated people. I need to be around people who have accomplished amazing things in their lives. They've overcome adversity. I need my batteries recharged. And the best way to find those people, believe it or not, that resource exists within our amputee community. Right here in our amputee community are so many people who have uh, looked death in the eye and said, oh, no, 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 not today. They've gotten knocked down. They've gotten back up. They've been through hell and high water. And they've come out on the other side just as clean. And, um, you know, so, and these are people that not all of them are like these Paralympic athletes or, you know, these adaptive athletes that have climbed mountains or have done these extreme sports and all that kind of stuff. These are everyday people who just are living their lives to the fullest. They're enjoying themselves and they're not letting their, their uh, new normal stop them from doing whatever it is that they want to do if they want to garden if they want to you know just walk their children to school or whatever it is they're doing it with confidence and you're doing it by and you're giving back to uh to uh our our community so surround yourself with positive people people who can uplift you and i always tell my kids i teach a class on the weekends uh, of kids uh, how to fly drones and stuff i always tell them you know, you got to be careful of who you spend time with. You got to pick and choose the people that you spend time with. If you hang out with confident people, you'll be confident. You hang out with intelligent people, you'll eventually be intelligent. You hang out with millionaires, they will motivate you and guide you to be a millionaire. If you hang out with stupid people, people who are committing crimes, and probably so you're going to do the same thing. So make sure you spend time with the right people and learn a new hobby or skill. Like I said earlier, not everybody has to be an adapt adaptive athlete. You know, I took up uh, flying remote controlled airplanes. Uh, I love flying drones. I, this is a picture of me flying my remote controlled jet. And, um, and the fact that it's really funny, I've used some of the, the resources to, that I've used to overcome my amputation. I've used that same, I like to call it personal power. I've used that personal power in, to, in my uh, flying, in my hobby, I've actually come, become pretty good at it. So find a hobby, something that you can do, um, you know, and compete with other people or something that just makes you feel good. You know? And uh, um, these are resources. I mean, these are, are pieces of advice, I think, that'll work really, really well for you in your, in your journey. Power of confidence. How about we talk about that for a minute? You know, people who are self-confident, they're admired by others. You know, you've seen someone walk into a room with overwhelming confident energy and they just own the room. Maybe it's their physique, you know, maybe it's their academic excellence, or, but 
whatever it is, you know, they held their head up high. They didn't show any signs of weakness. And, um, and, and you're just attracted to that, you know, and for years, for years, amputees were viewed as weak or less than. And that social stigma has hounded the disabled community like a plague. And I'm so glad that we're now changing that. We have changed that because back when, I keep going back to this, back when I first became an amputee, you know, the, 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 actually the word of the day was, you know, it's crippled. And then that changed to handicapped. And then that changed to disabled. And then that changed to adaptive. Um, so no longer are we looked at as being, um, you know, weak. We're actually strong. And one of the things that's helped us to showcase our strengths and our talents has been the advancement of prosthetic leg and arm technology. They allowed us as uh, powerful human beings with our disability, they've allowed us to go out and show how strong we truly are, not only to the world, but most importantly, we show how strong we truly are to ourselves. So confidence is huge. Confidence is power. You know, my ability is stronger than my disability, and that's straight talk. Confidence is sexy. Ladies, you know, even, you, even though you may have a disability or you're missing a limb, if you can own that and be confident and comfortable in the skin that you're in, that's hella attractive to a man. I'm telling you from experience. And gentlemen, you know, I, I mean, I've got scars all on my arms. I have two prosthetic legs that I wear to walk. And when I'm out in public and I go out and I walk into a room or I get on an airplane or I'm walking through the airport or a mall and I'm showcasing, you know, all the, the prosthetic leg technology and I'm just holding my head up high and, and I'm walking with just, just, you know, this strength. People gravitate towards that. They, they open doors for you. They speak to you with a, with a, a softer tone. You know, they, they, they smile. Hey, how are you today? You know, and, and I see a difference. I see a difference from where I wear shorts compared to where I wear long pants. When I'm wearing long pants, people just tend to eh, get out of my way. When I'm wearing shorts, they tend to hold the door for me. You know, not out of pity, but out of respect. So wear your confidence like a badge and strike a confident pose. You know, uh, this, this is actually, uh, I wish I had my phone with me. Where is my phone? It, it's a, it, there's a, there's a, uh, man, I can't find my phone. There's a, if you, there was a study that was done that if you pretend to be a superhero, like you stand erect, you know, with your hands on your hips and your legs spread open, your head held high, there's actually uh, endorphins that are released in your brain, which make you feel better about yourself. And it can uh, reduce cortisol, I think it is, which is like a depressant. It reduces that and actually makes you feel good about yourself. So if you are going through a dark period, you know, just practice standing like a superhero. That's one of my favorite superheroes uh, right here, Wonder Woman, especially when I was growing up as a kid, I thought she was hot. And, um, but yeah, so strike that confident pose if you need to reduce some stress. And this probably has to be one of the most talked about conversations that I've had with the amputee community um, when it comes to dating. Dating, intimacy, and disclosing your disability. Um, I've had some really intimate conversations with some of my brothers and sisters about these topics. And briefly, I'm gonna give you uh, some of my advice and, and, and advice from, from situations that I've experienced firsthand. There was a time where I hid my disability because I was insecure and I wasn't confident with myself. And I was a teenager and I was going through the dating process and it was this girl that I liked. Um, and she was just beautiful. She had a twin sister, both of them were beautiful and everybody wanted to hook up with these girls. And I actually got, I got to meet her on a blind date. And I was so scared that she wouldn't like me when she found out, if she found out that I was an amputee that I didn't have the courage to tell her that I was an amputee. And she was so into me. She really, really liked me, but I didn't walk with an obvious limp. So she didn't know that I was an amputee. But 
when she found out through a third party that I was an amputee, she was so hurt because I was deceptive and I didn't tell her the truth that I was an amputee, that she didn't want to be with me anymore. She didn't want to date me or anything. She turned her back on me. So that backfired on me and that taught me a really important lesson that I need to be honest with myself and with my situation. And I need to disclose my disability right from the jump, okay? I need to let people know who I am right from the start. If I'm gonna go on a date, if I'm on a dating website, um, I let them know right up front. I've never been on an online dating website before, but if I was to do that, um, I would let them know right from the start. Now, I've met women in bars and restaurants, and this is the first thing I do. I'll let them know, hey, you know, yeah, I'm an amputee, and it's like a badge of honor I've seen, and, and it's like no big deal. I've never been rejected. I've never been turned down um, by a, a woman because of my amputee status, and I think what has helped me is the confidence that I have, whether I whether I truly had the confidence or not, I faked the funk. Some people can fake confidence, fake it until you make it. But being open and honest, I think is the, the most attractive quality about a person. And um, I think it'll, it'll, it really weeds out all of the frustration, the potential frustration that you can encounter by disclosing your disability at a later time. You're going to run into a problem, but I had a chance to talk with some beautiful ladies here about when to disclose your disability when dating, and I wanted to share this video with you, so check this out. Online dating is really popular for everybody. Everybody knows about all the different apps and websites and stuff like that. As disabled, beautiful women, if you were to get on a dating app website, would you list your disability right up front, or would you wait until you met the person in person to tell them about your disability? I, I'm on dating apps, um, and I do. I put it right out there because I kind of feel like it is part of me. It doesn't define who I am by any means, but I think that it's important for somebody to know that it's like my whole self, you know? And personally, I wouldn't want to be like surprised by something about somebody that I didn't know. I would, unless it was like they didn't put it out there, and then when you ch when you're chatting on there, they let you know right away. I don't think it's a defining factor by any means that you know for if someone would date me. But yeah, I I think it's for me. I like to put it out there, but I'm proud of me. So like who I am, you know. That's, yes, yeah. that's very important. You have to be proud of who you are. Love yourself. And I feel like it weeds out the shallow people. Absolutely. I, yeah. Absolutely. I agree with Nicole as well. I used to, um, I've used dating apps in the past and I can put it out there. Like, I'll put a picture of my legs and if they have a question, they can ask. Personally, I always try to look at the other person's point of view. So if I was going on a date with someone from an app, I wouldn't want to be surprised either. I would just want to have a heads up. Um, not that I would treat that person differently, but it's just nice to know. I do it as a, like, respect for the other person. And at the same time, it's important, like you said, meeting out shallow people. Some people might not be comfortable with that, and that's okay. Yeah. That's just personal preference. There might be some things that we prefer in other people sure. we date. Yeah. And, yeah. and maybe you yeah. won't be comfortable with other things. It doesn't always have to be physical. Yeah. There are some things that we have some preferences for. And I do know other amputees that are on dating apps that don't put it out there because they feel like it shouldn't matter, right? Like, they're like, why does it matter if I'm missing a leg, if you see that or not? Like, I want you to know who I am, not my physical, which I, I understand that point of view, too. So, like I said, I, I've looked at, like Nicole said, uh, I understand both points of view, and I guess it all comes down to personal preference when to disclose your disability when dating, what's worked for me and what's worked for a lot of other people that I've talked to and about this issue is to be honest upfront, right from the start. Like she said, it weeds out the shallow people. Uh, it saves yourself a lot of heartache, 
um, down the road. Um, and I think, you know, honesty is the best quality. Uh, not only is confidence sexy, but honesty is hella, hella sexy. So, which leads us to talking about uh, intimacy. Online. You know, and what's intimacy like as an amputee? This is a huge topic. A lot of people that were intimate prior to becoming an amputee want to know if anything's going to change um, physically, psychologically, you know, emotionally. Uh, there's going to be some times where people who have scars or have a, you know, a missing limb, they're going to feel a little insecure to show their body part or their body with their partner. And it's totally natural. I think the best way to, to approach it, um, if you have a support system, uh, if your partner is there to support you, the best thing for, for all of us, I think, is to be able to talk with others who have been there, who have gone down that path before you and can help guide you through you know, what intimacy is going to be like as you're uh, a new normal amputee. So I have another video that I like to play with of these ladies talking about intimacy. So check this out. Let's take the conversation up just a notch and talk about intimacy uh, while disabled. I mean, you ladies are beautiful. Um, you're amputees, but you're still whole, beautiful women. And you have needs and wants and desires just like anybody because you're human beings. So has anything changed with your intimacy when it comes to having sex? You know, as an amputee, is it better? Is it worse? Did you get more creative? Did you have to get more creative? Because I guess that's what I want to ask. Throw it out there, you know. It's, people want to know. For me, it's gotten better. And I know I joke about this a lot, but it's kind of true. There aren't any legs to get in the way. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the legs. Well, so, I heard legs get in the way. I yeah, heard that. yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> there's more flexibility. Because like I said, you don't have to worry about more. Maybe. Uh, Mind you, we're all bilateral above the knee amputee women over here, yeah. so we don't have knees and our hamstrings don't connect to anything. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and so, it's, wow. it's, so it really has gotten a lot better. And, and again, because of the fact that I've accepted myself and who I am and I'm confident in who I am, that just makes your sexual relationship right. better because you have that confidence when you are with your spouse or with your partner there's nothing wrong. There's nothing that gets away in that. Right. And so it just makes that sexual experience just so much more. I think there's a sense of nervousness. Like, that's how I've always been, I guess. Since my amputation and having sex with someone that I've been dating. Like, uh, are they going to see my scars and be, like, grossed out? Are they going to, like not be able to be aroused like by my body but you quickly learn like once you're in the situation that it has nothing to do with that you know at the end of the day you know we're human beings and when it comes to being intimate all that other stuff like leaves the room and it just becomes this connecting moment with that other person and it's really based on you right yeah, i mean right. if you right. 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 Love yourself, and you are confident in yourself, and you feel okay doing those things. Then, when you're with that other person, it's—I mean, it's going to be magic, like it would, would, would have been regardless. Yep, that's some great advice. Um, again, by Nicole. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, intimacy can can be better uh, the more open you are about yourself, about your situation with your partner um, it doesn't have to be so nerve-wracking it's all about that honesty and that confidence so if you don't have it maybe talking to somebody to help you get it you know let me see uh, being your authentic self uh, is a daily practice of letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are just be yourself there's so many people out here in this world, not only people who don't, 
uh, who are not disabled, but just people, you know, everybody, just a lot of people who are not happy with who they are. Then they're getting plastic surgery or they're trying to be something that they're not. And they spend so much energy. They burn so many resources trying to be who they authentically are not. Such a waste of time, such a waste of energy. Just be who you are. If people, people will love you for who you are. And if they don't, you don't need them in your life. So be your authentic self. Um, this was a slide that I just saw. I thought it was kind of cool. I show my scars so that others may know that they can heal. You know, I was raised to be a, a person of service and to give back to the community. My father was a man of service. He taught me his ways to, uh, to help other people. And that's why you know, I show my scars. That's why I show my prosthesis when I'm out in public. That's why I show people uh, you know, when I'm doing certain things with my prosthesis to know that, you know what? You can bounce back, you can heal. You know, life is not always fair. Uh, sometimes we do get knocked down through no fault of our own, but we can always get back up. I like to tell people, especially my kids that I teach on the weekend, that inside of each and every one of us, there's this personal power. And I don't think that everybody knows that they possess this personal power because they don't necessarily have a reason to exercise their personal power. Now, us amputees, we get knocked down. We got knocked down. So we have to exercise our personal power in order to rehabilitate and adjust to our new normal. Get back to center. So you know, we got knocked down, we were out of balance. So come back to that center place. And then we, 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 we realize that, damn, I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty powerful. That personal power is inside of me. And then we can manifest that personal power and spread it exponentially into other areas of our lives. Now, people who live a quote unquote safe life, you know, they've never been knocked down. They've never experienced any trauma and no pain. They may not necessarily know how powerful they are because they don't have the daily uh, opportunity to exercise their personal power. So there's a bright side to getting knocked down, to experiencing a trauma, is to show that you are strong, that you can rehabilitate, you can come back to center and adjust and accept your new normal. So show those scars. Chicks dig scars. They, girls love scars, man, especially if you can show them uh, with confidence and, proud, and be proud. And dare to be yourself. You know, we're all different. We come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. My father told me a long time ago, son, he said, each and every one of us was born unique, born with a special gift. And somebody, somewhere can benefit from your life story, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what your social or economic status is, um, you have a gift you can inspire somebody somewhere to live their best life. So dare to be yourself, dare to be your authentic self. Um, there is no one else here who is just like you and we need you. So this is kind of like the end of my, uh, my presentation. I didn't want to run over. I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions. If anybody wanted to, uh, to talk about some stuff, we got some questions. That would be great. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, fire away, I'm here. I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the topics that we talked about. Let's see. So we have a question says, uh, I worry about putting my amputation as part of my profile on dating apps because of devotees, but is that a bad thing? Actually, no, it's not a bad thing. Um, that's being safe. There are some, some people that are different. There are some um, unscrupulous people in this world, unfortunately, that we have to deal with. And they do look at us amputees uh, in, in ways that, um, you know, for their, 
sexual enjoyment or whatever. Um, and you have to be careful. You have to weed those people out. So I don't know if you're a young man or you're a young lady. Um, I would suggest that just be careful. You know, it is a personal preference to share your, uh, your profile, you know, photos on dating websites. Usually the dating websites, especially the ones that you have to pay for, a lot of times people are screened, um, but there are devotees there. They got money just like everybody else. And, you know, they can, they can uh, put up a, they can pay for a profile just like you or I can. But um, yeah, you have to be careful. Um, and that's personal preference. Me, if I was on a dating website, I would put up a photo of myself uh, with my prosthesis to, to let, you know, potential dates love interests you know, ladies know that you know this is a part of me this is who i am but i'm sure that there would be some devotees that would you know reach out to me and you just have to weed through the bs you have to weed through the crap um, and just be careful you have to do that with anybody just be careful <laughs> uh, any other questions let's see No other questions in the Q&A. So I guess uh, there's no other questions. Uh, we can sit here for the next 15 minutes and just kind of stare at each other. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for, for coming and participating in, uh, in my presentation. And um, I really hope that some of the information that I shared uh, through my years in, the, in this journey uh, can be beneficial to you as you uh, progress with your journey in the amputee community. I really look forward to a time where we can meet again in person. Um, please, please, please support the amputee coalition. Uh, go to the website, go to their social media pages. Uh, the website has got a ton of information that is so useful, and so beneficial to each and every one of us as we uh, rehabilitate. It's therapeutic to be able to network with other people who are like-minded, um, people who have already been down, you know, that road that you're about to walk down and people who can hold your hand and guide you through uh, some of the ups and the downs. And the Amputee Coalition is definitely a, the best resource that we have on, on this planet to, uh, to help guide us through uh, some of the challenging times of living with limb loss. So. Until the day that we can get together, hopefully uh, next national conference, we can get together in person, we can be safe and um, we can get some hugs on. And um, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. So until then, take care, God bless. And, um, never underestimate the power of the disabled. Peace and blessings, y'all. <laughs>